Welcome, everybody, to episode 8 of Farland's Commentaries of Resident Evil, Chris Rebirth. First order of business, as always in Resident Evil games, is a document. Goody. Orders. Top Secret, July 22nd, 1998, 2.13. To the head of security, X day is approaching. Complete the following orders within the week. Number one, lure the members of STARS into the lab and have them fight with the BOW in order to attain data of actual battles. Number two, collect two embryos per BOW type, making sure to include all species except for the tyrant. Well, that's a bit much to ask of somebody within a week. Number three, destroy the Arclay lab, including all research in lab and lab animals in a manner which will seem accidental. Universal constructor. You know, I don't understand that logic. Really, you're gonna just you're just gonna kill off like maybe thirty people or so, just because it's all part of a mission. I'm sorry, but that's just stupid. In almost every conceivable way. But hey, you gotta be evil somehow. And right, this puzzle right here. Now, on regular DS, this puzzle's not really that hard. All you gotta do is blow into the microphone and all the candles will go out. Shooting. Yeah, it's that easy. But, on an emulator, as I've already reminded you guys, is... It was a real pain. Let's just say that my throat was really cold and dry. Very cold and dry. But whatever, my efforts were well paid with the red gem, the key to victory. Now let's take a little short journey downstairs. Drum roll, please. Cult Python. Then again, it could also be the Cult Anaconda since they redesigned it. You know, the only way you could ever tell the difference between the two guns is if, in the remake, you examine the two weapons. The only real difference is that the Cult Anaconda has like a, a small addition on the top of the barrel. That's it. Oh look, a knife sequence. Wait a minute. So the windows repair themselves, and the dogs are smashing through them again. I guess we've got caught in a time warp. Or something. Oh, be quiet. Your howls go unanswered. But for my troubles, I get seven shotgun shells. That's definitely a pretty good deal. A full clip. We're just killing three dogs, wow. And there you go. Sweet. You gotta admit, that that feeling of power that you get, that from the start, from the on-go, when you first encounter those kinds of enemies, there's so much trouble, and they give you so much hell, that you, cannot, if you get the feeling that there's no way you could possibly survive, and then you get this. Well, that didn't quite show it a good example, but first we gotta take care of this crow, then I will show you the awesome might of the Magnum again. Yes. It's beautiful, isn't it? Such craftsmanship. in this hand cannon. One shot is all it takes to down these motherfuckers, And it's a beautiful feeling, you have to admit. Oh, you think I was gonna forget about him? Nah. So the mission is we should be technically leaving the mansion by now. But don't you want to indulge in the murder of these twisted fiends? Bam! Right in the back of the skull. Oh, you little bastard. You sneaky little f**k. 
Why, hello there. Bam! Alright, we'll leave the mansion and continue with the story. Actually, no, wait, let's go kill one more hunter, shall we? Just one more hunter, guys. Just one more, then we'll leave and move on, okay? I promise. Oh. Would you look at that? Alright, here, boy. Come on. Come on. There we go. Have a nice sleep. I know you guys don't exactly appreciate me harping on my moment here, you know, with the Magnum wasting ammo, taking unnecessary risk, but you have to admit, taking on an enemy that to give you so much trouble that easily, it's surely something. Of course, it just takes this to ruin your day, right here. If it wasn't the hunters that had to ruin my moment, it had to be the dogs. And just for like a few minutes I fell on top of the world and now I feel like I'm on the ground again. Oh well. But hey, I can blow vomit in his face. Something I'm pretty sure Chris, anyone with powerful lungs could do in real life. Wow. <laughs> that was just weird. Killing a hunter with one slash of your knife. If only it was that strong in the game, sadly not. So our business accordingly is that we have to head back to the guardhouse, which is di quite different from the original plan in the classic mode, where you just go straight to the underground. Nope, we're heading to the guardhouse again for a rather interesting boss fight. It's actually quite different than what you're used to seeing in Resident Evil games. But yes, we have to go through this annoying crank action. The one part of the game that gets a little bit tedious for me. Going in circles to spin a crank and go eh, eh, to get the water back up. And it really... It's one of those things that kind of grinds you. Then again, though, it's not that bad. It does create a nice contrast between the combat and the slower parts, where there's not really much combat going on. Think about it, in an interactive medium like this, where the story and the gameplay are fused more or less, it is important to have a good contrast, otherwise your game's going to get very tedious and boring very fast. I guess it's part of the reason why Resident Evil had so much st staying power all these years. Puzzles, walking around, doing fetch quests, and combat. It's actually quite a nice little combination. Not to mention it gives me a nice break from those hunters, so <laughs> I guess I can't complain too much, right? Speaking of hunters, again, they're in that long line of enemies that you can't really help but admire the challenge of, but also hate with all kinds of passion for being very annoying in some way or another. Kind of like the Cyber Assassin from System Shock 2 or the Ithosaurus from Half-Life. That's like off the top of my head. They're not the strongest enemies by far. I mean, if you know what to do, they're pretty easy to take out, but they have a peculiar attack pattern that just makes them very tricky to deal with, very hard to predict. But, I suppose it's just part of their charm. Makes it much more satisfying to just cream them. Like that. <laughs> but, deep down... The Hunters have a special place in my heart. It's kind of a shame that you don't really see them anymore. It would have been pretty nice to see at least something similar to the Hunter in more recent Resident Evil titles. Resident Evil 6 was pretty good, but does it have the Hunter? I didn't think so. Oh, of course. You know, now I'm starting to get more annoyed with these dogs than the Hunters. And the dogs do not have a special place in my heart. Their designs are their designs are not even original, so let's not even get into that. But right. The guardhouse once again. You'll notice that the ambience has changed, and now there are giant bees everywhere. An enemy that I particularly hate because they're very tricky to hit. I need to make sure I'm properly prepared because we got something waiting for us in the uh Plant 42 room. 
or point forty two. Kind of an odd name for a room. Yes. More hunters. Fantastic. Gotta love hunters and bees in the same room. Oh, that's just grand. And of course... Yes, of course. Now I'm starting to take back everything I said. And what do we have waiting for us? Yawn! Well, could you look at that? And he's become equipped with armor plating, so guns aren't gonna work. The only way we can defeat this giant monster is with a knife. Don't ask me how that's practical at all, because I, I honestly couldn't tell you how Chris could fight this thing with a knife. Alright, all you gotta really do is just hit him at the right moment in order to stun him. If you don't stun him, you're gonna take a heavy amount of damage. That's really all there is to this boss fight. I wouldn't say it'd be easy, of course, but if you've mastered the knifing game, it should be pretty handy. The one way you keep track of his health is by paying attention to the pool of purple blood that's f that forms beneath him. Speaking of which, do snakes have purple blood in real life? I'm pretty sure they don't. It's like green blood, right? Or whatever, I'm getting the I'm getting the routine down. Just a little more. Come on. I think one more should do it. And I win! That wasn't very bad. I went accordingly to plan, and our reward is that book. Particularly Doom Book 1. And now we can continue onward to the underground unencumbered. Within the binding of the book we find a medal of all things. You know, you really have to wonder who an umbrella thought of this. Who puts a medal on a book? And why is that medal a key to access some other place? This technologically advanced corporation has to use some asinine locking scheme in order to hide something. I guess it wouldn't be Umbrella if they didn't have some ridiculous method of hiding all their stuff. Especially if it's from the people that they're supposed to be giving it to in the first place. It's like they knew someone was going to be coming there. But alas, that's all we have. That's all the time we have for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Farron's Commentaries of Resident Evil Chris Rebirth, and I'll be seeing you soon in Episode 9. Sign off.